Welcome to a special Q&A of Trickster, one of the 50 titles in official selection at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival. As part of Share Her Journey, Tiff's commitment to supporting women behind and in front of the camera, we're thrilled to spotlight the incredible films and series by women at this year's festival, including Trickster. My name is Jeff McNaughton, and I'm the lead programmer of Primetime and Senior Director of Industry and Theatrical here at TIFF. I'm very excited to be here with director and co-creator Michelle Latimer and lead actor Joel Ouellette. Thank you to our audience for joining us. As an organization still impacted by COVID, we need to support our audiences so that we can continue to present films to future generations and preserve these diverse and important voices. This series is eligible for the People's Choice Award, so vote for your favorite films and series at tiff.net slash vote. Michelle, Joel, welcome. This is really exciting to have you both here. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. We're excited. <laughs> so Michelle, it's a big year. You have two projects at TIFF this year, the documentary Inconvenient Indian and Trickster, uh, which are both literary adaptations. Uh, I was wondering if you could start by telling us what drew you to Eden Robinson's novel, Son of Trickster? Sure. Um, well, I picked it up just as an escape. I thought I would read it and have some fun with it. And and I, I couldn't get myself out of it. I read it in a span of three days and the characters just stayed with me. I felt like they were people I knew and I grew up with. And there was like an irreverent humor and sort of a violence, but also a love. It just felt real. And then the added bonus having the supernatural, that the story of the mythological trickster that I grew up with in my childhood, to actually have that sort of contemporized in the story of Jared, I just, I, I, I it was like a no brainer for me. <laughs> and and the adaptation process is tricky because I'm I'm guessing with with Eden's book, there's there's pieces of it that you really want to get right. What was the most important part of it that you wanted to kind of, um, yeah, bring justice to? For me, I would just, I really wanted to honor the place and the people, the Heisla nation. And we, we shot in Kitimat Village for a portion of the, the filming. And it was just important for me to get it right. I feel like sometimes with indigenous stories, we pan indigenize everything and we forget that we have so many nations and so many different kinds of cultural um, experiences. And I wanted it to be specific to to Eden's nation, to the Heisla nation. She's also Heisla Helsic. So we have that dichotomy in the, in the show. Mm. And I'm sure there's a lot that you learn with every shoot that you're on in terms of the content that you're exploring. What did you learn about the trickster mythology or did you have a, a you mentioned you had a, you knew of the trickster before in terms of stories and growing up, but what did you learn that you didn't know? Um, well, I think it's, I mean, there's always so many things to learn. I think for me, I was really interested in the, um, the idea of, of witches and that witches actually, I was so, I was worried about using that word, but then Eden was like, no, we have witches. We have me medicine that, in it. and I, for me, that was really new to learn about that um, and to learn about the significance of that culturally. And then there's also the, just this pure escapist imagination, like to get to create a world where there's monsters. Uh, I grew up watching early David Cronenberg films and, you know, I love Guillermo del Toro and I just, it was such a joy to be able to play in that arena. <laughs> I bet. Um, Joel, this is your first leading role uh, in a project. What connected you to the character of Jared? Um, well, Jared, he, he's in high school, you know, he's a 17 year old kid. I was a 17 year old kid when I, when I got casted and I just graduated high school. I could really feel like I could resonate with, you know, like, I don't know, the struggles that teenagers have, you know, like with like, even if it's partying or, I don't know, family troubles, you know, everyone has family troubles, girls, academics, all that stuff. So I could really, I could really put myself in, in, in his shoes and really feel what he was going through. So I feel like that definitely helped me uh, drew like, like go to the character more. Mm -hmm. And what was some of the guidance you got from Michelle during produc production or, or pre-production to kind of find Jared's voice? Well, Michelle, she she really she knew where the character had to be, you know, and she she knew how to how to push me to to to, to my limits to get to that place to to get to those emotional states that Jared had to go to, or you know, even just like anything, she helped me out with. You know, she was an actress before too, so she could really, you know, put herself in my shoes and and, and understand what what I had to like hear to 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 feel what Jared was going through, or or 
or like you know, like feel or act. And I feel like she really, really pushed me to that to that point. And this is a question for both of you. So um, up to you in terms of who wants to answer first. But um, looking back on this series five years from now, um, what will be your fondest memory of production um, that you can take away? Um, my fondest memory, I don't know. It, it was really, it was a lot of fun, you know, like we, we had a lot of, a lot of fun offset, like just, we, we would chill at each other's like, or like rooms or, or, or we would go like, go get stuff to eat or anything. Like it, it was fun, but uh, like onset, I probably, the fondest memory is probably learning so much about just acting and, you know, the filming industry. I, it was like a perfect like catalyst for my career and and i really appreciate all like the knowledge i learned from everyone everyone offset and and, and, and like crew and cast I, uh, that was definitely the fondest memories all the knowledge i learned michelle well i, I love shooting in kitimat uh that was that was really important to me uh i think for me like the the it, this the biggest challenge in working in this medium is is to try and sort of think about different structures. How do we indigenize the experience? And it, it's sort of a colonial uh, hierarchical system being on a film set. So how do we sort of rebuild that in a different way and, and give it more authenticity for the indigenous process of, of storytelling? So to look out at a crew and see indigenous people like behind the scenes in every department, including our beautiful cast in front of the camera, I mean, I've never had that experience. I've never experienced that. And I, I think we can do better. Like, thank God we have a second season that we're going to get a chance to do even more. But like that for me, you ask me, where will I look back at five years ago? I hope in five years, I look back and I see so many productions that are doing this, that it's just the norm. But for me, it was one of the first times in my career that I had that opportunity to see that representation on all levels. And it was the most exciting thing. Mm -hmm. That actually gets me to my next question. So this, to my knowledge, is the first Indigenous-led primetime drama on a national network. And as a storyteller who is Indigenous, um, what do you hope this changes the landscape? Or how do you hope this changes the landscape in the future? I just think we're ready for different kinds of stories. I, I'm so tired of the same stories. How many more cop shows do we need to see? I mean, I, I just feel like there's so many stories out there. And, you know, to, to quote Thomas King, because my other project, you know, is about Thomas King's work. He says, stories are all we are. And yet, once you put a story out there, you can't call it back. Stories can be beautiful and celebratory. Stories can also be dangerous, you know? So what are the, like, what's our responsibility to each other in the stories we're telling? And I think stories can be instrumental in how we move forward. Agreed. Um, Joel, if Trickster had been on television when you were growing up in Medicine Hat, what would have that meant to you as, uh, uh, yeah, a young adult? Uh, Trickster is almost like, he's almost like a, a superhero in, in aspects of things. You know, I would have probably thrown away like Spider-Man, Superman. I'd probably like, Jared and Trickster would probably be like my role model. You know, I probably would have been like dressing up as Raven for Halloween or like something like that. I, I, I would have, I would have took a lot of inspiration from him and, and, and look like I would have seen a person, you know, my, my, my ethnicity and I would have, I would have learned a lot more about about native culture at a younger age and I would have been exposed to that and I would have you know been on a path to discovery on on native culture a lot sooner I feel like it was in the culture and the media we talk about how much the industry needs to grow and um, although this is something that definitely needs to be celebrated there is a lot of work to be done and I wonder what your thoughts are, Michelle, in terms of the audience's role in all of this. Um, what do you hope the Canadian audiences take away from watching this series? Well, I hope they enjoy it across the board, Indigenous people and non-Indigenous, and then that translates into audiences and numbers so that we can show the networks that this isn't just about checking a diversity box. This is actually, we can make sustainable television that's entertaining and that can profit. And, and unfortunately, profit often in this culture seems to be like the one thing we really we really put above everything else but it's also about like celebrating where we come from what makes up Canada what are our value systems and I think you know Trickster does that but it's doing it in an entertaining way like it's bringing up a lot of different issues that we might normally see in the news but we get to enjoy it through genre and genre fiction and I think 
I think that's a, there's so many ways to tell a good story. As we know from sitting around the fire and listening to our elders, there's so many great stories to be had that I think we're ready to do that, like push the boundaries of that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're you talking about genre, which I think is an interesting entryway point to this, this story, obviously. Um, and I wanted to understand how you kind of address the more and shot the surreal aspects of it. Um, Obviously, you know, on paper, it's one thing, but as a director and creator, um, turning those uh, surreal elements uh, and putting them on screen, um, is it what you imagined when reading the book? And uh, what did you feel like you got right? Hmm. Well, uh, it, it's very challenging because Eden's book is sprawling and there's so many worlds and it's, there's many characters and different kinds of spirits and monsters. And as Eden likes to say, I never have to think about budget when I'm creating a, a creating a book. But of course we have to think about budget. So, I mean, I, I enjoyed creating the characters and being influenced by um, like by nature and and by going to those those experiences in my childhood and, and drawing from that. I think the challenge was we only could shoot about five days in Kitimat. And because of the way our financing structures are here, most of our money came from the Northern Ontario on, on, uh, the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund, but meant we had to film in Northern Ontario. So we had to match North Bay to look like British Columbia. And so a lot of work went into like location scouting, uh, VFXing mountains into locations. We had to color correct down because um, we were shooting in the fall in Ontario. So, and, and yet everything was so lush and green in British Columbia. So thinking about how to make sort of a seamless world, that was challenging and I think we got it right. I, I think it works. I don't think people would know which things we'd shot in British Columbia and which we'd shot in Northern Ontario. But, um, and also we worked on, with on Nipissing First Nation, which I was really proud of because we could, and in Kitimat Village as well. So we could really um, have indigenous people involved at every level, you know, including the land we were on. Mm. And so, something that really drew me to this series when I first watched it is how cinematic it is. Uh, is that something you were thinking about going into it? You mentioned, you know, I mean, all the visual effects that needed to go into the characters, the the vastness of the story. Um, was that a big uh, attraction to it for you? Absolutely. I think some of the most powerful moments in my life, both in a good way and in a bad way, have been when I'm in an environment and I'm just blown away and awed by the expansiveness of the land. And that can happen in a, a beautiful scenario, like you're looking at the Grand Canyon going, this is a miracle, or the night sky going, this is a miracle. And it can also happen in a tragic way, like the first time I saw the Alberta tar sands, I was mm -hmm. just blown away by the destruction, the man-made destruction. And I think that's kind of what I'm trying to do. The land is a character in the sh in the film in in Trickster, and um and I'm also trying to draw attention to like what are the monsters we're afraid of through our mythology, and what are the monsters maybe we should be more afraid of within ourselves, like our mm -hmm. own greed and consumption and that sort of thing. No, that's it's a great way of thinking of it, and this idea of when you watch the series, I think understanding. Uh, yeah, the lines between monsters are completely blurred. Um, the idea of the, the human monsters in it all, um, but also the identity that a trickster can take, the human identity that a trickster can take, that is challenging you as an audience to really grasp what you're seeing. Um, Joel, have you have you seen uh, the whole series at this point? And um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts? Obviously seeing yourself on screen, that's gotta be extremely exciting and, and the world is about to see you on screen as well. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen the full series yet, but uh, when I went to like the ADR stuff, it was really weird seeing yourself on screen, but really cool, I don't know. It, it was kind of hard to watch it all at the same time though. It's hard not to let it cringe at yourself sometimes, <laughs> there, but I mean, it, it's really cool though. So when seeing yourself on screen, did you have the reaction of like, oh, I could have done that better and and wanting to second shot it, maybe one or two instances? Uh, yeah, you are your little self-critic, like your ultimate, you're the, like, you're the most, your ultimate self-critic, you know? So I feel like every little thing I you could say that you could do better, but I, I just accept it for what it is, and, and I, I'm confident in, in how how I acted in it. And of course, I, you could you could you think that you could you want to go back and change some things, but you know, over overall, it's just it's just awesome. And I feel like it's only only little stuff that like I'm gonna look at myself, and I'm only I'm, I'm 
the only one that's going to know and to like want to change and stuff. But it was it's really cool. So. Yeah, completely. I, I think you were uh, amazing in this, and you and you and uh, as the lead and such a young lead, your ability to to carry this story is fantastic. And I think audience should be really exciting, as Michelle mentioned earlier, that we're going to get to see a second season. Um, so my last question, I guess, for Michelle is, uh, when does second the second season starts shooting, um, and what do you maybe want to do differently uh, in this season? Yeah. Um, well, I am I am writing as we speak. Uh, can you see the bags under my eyes? <laughs> um, no, I'm writing, 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 and um, we will go into prep early, uh, like late this year, and start shooting sort of spring 2021. 20, uh, and what do I want to do differently? Well, we have three beautiful books. Uh, I just was sent the first pages of Eden's third book the other day, um, so we have a lot, of, a wealth of material to draw from. I think audience can expect to see more monsters and um, more, uh, Jared definitely goes on even more of a journey than the first season. And yeah, just sort of more, uh, more surprise, more, more worlds opening up as happens in Eden's books. Well, I am very excited about this and, and audiences who, who just saw this for the first time, uh, I'm guessing will be as well. So thanks so much for, for this and um, congratulations on uh, your series premiering at TIFF and in primetime. Thank you very much. It's really an honor.